Hello, kia ora. I'm Philip Duncan with your Climate Watch update for the month of August, brought to you by weatherwatch.co.nz and ruralweather.co.nz. Well, I'd say winter has been summed up by big air pressure systems, really big highs and really big lows that have been, for the most part, very slow moving as well. And there's no real change in that as we go into the first year of August, another enormous area of high pressure stretching from the northern part of Queensland all the way down very close to Antarctica. And it's been dredging up this sub-Antarctic airflow into New Zealand and also into some parts of Australia as well. Now, as that high moves on in, it's going to help push away the low pressure zones to the north here, which have been feeding down subtropical uh, airflows over the past few days and will continue to do so going into the first weekend of August. Behind all of that, this high pressure zone may split apart and affect our weather for the first half of the month, which is very similar to the weather patterns we've been seeing over June and July as well with these big slow moving highs and these big slow moving lows as well. And this low pressure zone is another one of those slow moving systems. Let's have a look and see what's going on with La Nina. No real change from where we've been for the last couple of months. It is in the neutral zone for the next few months ahead, going right through to December. Now, uh, in our last update, that green line was smack bang in the middle here. So it has dropped a little bit further down into that La Nina category, but not much. All of those lines there that you're seeing represent different computer modeling and they are all pretty much in this neutral area. The, one of them comes up here into El Nino, a few of them drop here into La Nina, but the majority of them are in that middle part, which means the neutral weather pattern we've got now is still with us over spring. Here's a different version of it. You can see here, August, October, December, and that needle may be a little bit closer to La Nina, but based on this, La Nina is not happening this year. On the other side of Australia, over the Indian Ocean, you've got the Indian Ocean Dipole, which is similar to El Nino and La Nina, and that is also slightly leaning towards negative, but again, it stays in neutral, which means don't expect any big changes to our weather pattern at the moment. This is where we are at. So let's take a look at where the highs and lows will be as we go into the first week of August, and this is the big one, the main high pressure zone here, shaped north to south. That's the reason why it's dredging up that sub-Antarctic airflow and pushing it into New Zealand and along the eastern side of Australia as well. We do have that low to the north that's pretty weak and will get weaker because it's surrounded by all of this high pressure. Now there's also some big stormy stuff down here as you would expect in the month of August. So we are seeing again as we've seen through June and July including at the start of July that record-breaking anticyclone that broke a 135-year-old record for the highest air pressure recorded in New Zealand. So seeing these big highs coming through means we have these long periods of dry weather, but then it can be equally followed by low pressure on the other side, which can linger for just as long. And that's certainly what we've been seeing in New Zealand so far this winter. So we're starting off with high pressure. As we go into the second week, this is still the same high pressure belt the one that we just showed you, the big tall one. Now it's changed shape, but this is still it. Now, massive low pressure down here, that's normal for this time of the year, but that's a extra large one. You know, it's a couple of times the size of Australia, probably when you stretch it out. Uh, but this system will be moving along towards us, bringing in a windy westerly. So nor'westers here, southwesters coming up for New Zealand. It is mostly south of us. The main riding, uh, driving feature is that high pressure zone and it will keep most of New Zealand drier than average, although I'd imagine the southwestern corner down here will get some rain. And as we go to the third week, this is still that same block of high pressure that for the 1st of August is currently over Australia. So it doesn't move very much over the first two weeks of the month. Now there's a small trough or a small you know, low pressure zone that's trying to form moving across Australia for the first week of August. By the middle of August, we expect this to now form out here over the North Tasman Sea, and that may well be fueled by a subtropical flow from Fiji that is also starting to come into New Zealand, which means things may really warm up as we go through this month. Of course, this far out, you can't lock this in to be exactly that shape, and so we still have to keep an eye on it. But there is a chance of some low pressure, but for the most part, right across the screen here, that's a lot of high pressure still around, and it looks a little more organized. And what I mean by that is the lows down here, the highs are up here, 
and the westerly winds blow along, which is kind of a normal weather pattern that we would see going into September. So let's have a look at the rainfall for the first two weeks of this month. And you can see uh, that blob of rain moving out to sea in the Tasman, but for the most part, the pale blue here is at the bottom of the scale, not much rain. Similar story around Australia. And what that is, it's kind of a rain shadow effect of the rain and cloud moving from the west to the east. Now there could be a bit of rain at the top of the country from that low when we kick off the month. And then we've got that other system potentially coming in the middle of the month out here in the Tasman. We'll keep an eye on it, whether it brings in rain to New Zealand or drops southwards or falls apart. That's something that I wouldn't want to be answering at this point. I'm not overly confident of doing these monthly updates. We do them because there's a huge amount of pressure from you guys wanting us to do them. Um, so I've got to be honest with you about how accurate they get after the halfway mark of the month. But this is what it's showing at the moment. Staying dry in places like Canterbury, the top part of the South Island, and around that central part of New Zealand. That's a closer view of it. So again, it's the areas that you would expect to see drier in the South Island at this time of the year with westerlies. But it may also go up into the North Island as well with drier weather coming through there. And the rain to the north, most of that is looking to fall in the first few days of the month. Marine heat waves, well, look at this. This map is changing. For a number of months this year, there was nothing showing up. It was green and none. Now we're seeing strong uh, and even severe marine heat waves starting to um, appear on the map, which means that the warmer it gets, I mean, it's not bad for swimming, put it that way, but it can also encourage, especially when you've got these slow moving lows, it can make them more energetic and fire up bigger downpours and thunderstorms and things like that. So we'll keep an eye on the marine heat waves as we carry along. But for now, the North Island in particular, seeing warmer than average sea surface conditions in most of our beaches. From a soil moisture point of view, unfortunately, um, Niwa delay these maps by a couple of days for their own commercial reasons, which is very frustrating from a scientific organization. So this is not capturing the rain that fell over the last couple of days with the cold blast at the end of July. But I do still think Canterbury is drier than usual. And like I say, with the next week or so coming up, weather does look dry there as well. So we're not expecting that to change anytime soon. And that is all from me for the Climate Watch update for the month of August. As I say, high pressure dominates the start of the month, uh, the second half of the month, maybe seeing some low pressure coming through. And there's still, I think, a fairly high risk across the month of August and going into September and maybe October of getting another wintry blast. But because everything is moving so slowly, don't expect anything to quickly happen anytime soon. That is all from me. We'll see you again one month from now in our next Climate Watch update.